Hello and welcome to another episode of Intune.Training, the place to learn how to use Microsoft Intune, the Steve and Adam show. Hey, I'm Adam. Hey, I'm Steve. How hey, you Steve, going, how's Adam? it going today, man? Oh, it's pretty good, mate. It's pretty good. We're having a little bit of fun with the uh, uh, all this learning and training that we're doing for work, and um, we're hopefully going to put it across into the Intune training sessions. So. Excellent, excellent. Well, uh, today, I think we're going to go through how to set up Team Viewer in your Intune tenant so that you can uh, remotely control um, devices, access them, provide support to your end users. Um, and so we'll talk through how to configure that and hopefully be able to demo a little bit of that for you. And uh, the best part about this, as is the case with all of our videos, uh, or most of our videos, is we're doing it live. So um, we're hoping we've got all the right pieces in place and you'll get to uh, watch us either succeed or or fail. So stick around. Yes. So let's start off with the back end setup because yes, as as Adam said, we're uh, we're doing this a little bit by the seat of our pants today, um, and we're going to be using my uh, company's so Vigilant IT's uh, Team Viewer account because when we looked at the cost of getting a troll version, we decided that it was not uh, cost effective. Um, for the uh, demos that we're doing. And this is not a sponsored video, and so therefore <laughs> we're going to wing it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we now have the uh, now familiar Intune portal uh, sitting in Azure and to connect TeamViewer in. So pro probably the important part to start off with is TeamViewer is the integration tool set that Microsoft has leveraged for Intune. So to allow you to do that remote assistance to your customers. Um, the reason why we use the built-in remote assistance engine from Intune um, to TeamViewer is so it's all simple and easy to access and to connect into that customer's computer. Um, so we're now in the Intune portal and we're going to select devices. Uh, and in the devices blade, we should see the TeamViewer connector. Uh, in hey, this Steve, section, do you think you can zoom just a wee bit? Sorry about that, Adam. I think it might help a little bit for us. Definitely. We'll go big. All right. Cool. So what we've got, um, I'll start back to the start of we're in the Azure portal and we're now going to Intune. Uh, and now we're going to select devices. Uh, in here we have the team viewer connector uh, and we select that team viewer connector. And the first time you go in here, you'll see that it requires setup. Pretty straightforward. You need to have a team viewer account. So I'm just going to say connect uh, and OK. And it's going to prompt me to authenticate into team viewer. But first we need to log in to authenticate it. And this will take a second. And this is going to pop us out to the TeamViewer website um, to allow us to authenticate on their page. And I'm going to put in my username and my password, and we're going to sign in there. And, and it's also worth noting, I mean, it's not obvious, we're not walking you through setting up um, a TeamViewer account, so you would need to already have a subscription to TeamViewer in order for this piece to work at this point. Definitely. Um, and, and this is all very much around making sure that we have that TeamViewer account already there, um, as the assumption is that you're using that for your remote um, connection solution, because we don't have um, the budget to be able to do that in our demo. Um, <laughs> so you'll see now that it's once we've signed in, uh, it's fully connected. We can close the window. And when we this is going from connecting to active. Oh, Steve, uh, uh, we lost your audio there for just a minute. It uh, just dropped out. It's now? back now, but it you had oh. a bit of a drop. Wow. Um, so um, it's connected as you can see, and then we've just hit that refresh button and we've gone from being connecting to active status. If you get into a situation where it's sitting in a constant connecting status, 
disconnect and then reconnect, and it tends to fix the issue up. Um, so along turn it with off and turn it back on. Very yes. Nice. Um, along with trying to log into the team bureau authorization again. Um, so we, we've had situations where it hasn't signed in successfully previously, and we've just had to try that authentication again. So you can use the same team viewer account on multiple Intune tenants. It's not a one to one relationship, which is fantastic. Um, it's made a life a lot easier for us um, as Microsoft service providers or managed service providers. Um, as we can have that solution sitting there. Um, so I'm just going to quickly install team, uh, download team viewer. Uh, um, uh, so part of what we need to do with the team viewer component uh, when it goes out to the client side, uh, and I'll just log in, um, is we need to have Team viewer already deployed out to the client computer. If team viewer is not deployed out to the client computer, what we what will happen is you won't be able to interact with the user uh, access control interfaces or UAC. Um, and I'll just say, look, you can't connect. Uh, so what we're going to quickly create is a design and deploy, um, and we're going to create a new installer. Um, and it's going to be an MSI, but you can also create it as a um, Mac OS. Uh, what we're wanting is just the actual host, um, because if we put the rest of it there, it means that it, you're going to have the ability to grab this stuff. So we're going to call this Intune.Training Demo. Uh, I don't want to automatically add to group. And I don't want that. Um, so this, we can go in here and we can add our own logo if we want. We can add any text that we want for coloring, titles. So let's quickly change this to intune.training. Um, and that's going to put the header across the top there. This is only required if you want to have access to the service account. And we're now going to de download the deployment package. Wait for it to download. Uh, and this is going to give us the binary executable that we need to deploy out to the computers. Um, so, where is this? What I might do, Adam because I don't want to package an application right now. So I'm just going to copy and paste this so you can put it into your VM. So okay. you can, uh, we can do the demo that way because otherwise it'll take another half an hour to package the app and get it out there and everything. Oh, I guess if we must. <laughs> um, and I'm going to download TeamViewer for myself. Um, so I have, so, so it's very important as an admin that you have signed in and activated your license for TeamViewer when you're trying to connect to the computer, because otherwise you end up getting a version mismatch issue and you don't have the ability to authenticate. So we're just going to use the full client here and quickly install. Um, make sure you're using the latest version, which is TeamViewer 14. Uh, and I'll go through the process of installing that really quickly. And so it's, it's I mean, it's worth noting. Um, so you would normally take this and go through the the um, packaging process to um, import this in as an Intune application and push this through your company portal uh, normally if we were going to go through all of that. But That's just for the purposes of the demo, we're going to assume you've done that, and now we've just got into the uh, team viewer running on our target workstations. Yep, that's correct. So um, it, it's all about making sure that um, the um, the agent is on that computer, and and 
we're just shortcutting the process of putting it as a Win32 application. There's there's plenty of blogs out there on how to do it silently um, and set that up for you. Um, so cool, we're now signed in. I'll just minimize that. Um, and we're, I'm set up at my end. Are you ready, Adam? I think I am. Let me see. So I need to, it says I need to set up a personal password. Nope, you can skip that. Skip that. Okay. All right, I am ready. Yep, so on the client <clears> side, <throat> what, we're, what you'll see is we now have the ability to go to all devices and grab Adam's laptop or computer, in this case his VM. Um, and what we'll see now is the ability to do remote assistance is no longer saying needs to be configured um, and we can hit more and new remote assistance session and this will go and send a prompt to Adam's computer um, where if he when he opens up the company portal application um, he'll see a flag in the top right corner okay so um, do we want to switch over to my machine uh, yes if we could Adam okay all right let's do that Share, yes, that guy. Uh, so oh, I was in the middle of doing some work. Um, let me jump over and find that company portal. Yep. It's good to see you're um, working hard while we're doing the podcast, Adam. I'm, I'm proud of you. Well, I mean, I was waiting on you a whole lot, so I just... Yeah, I, you know, I get it. Um, so you'll see do. up the top right is the two, and you click on that for us. Uh, and the bottom one is your admin wants to connect. So if you just Very select nice. that for me. Now, so um, would this, without you being on the phone with me, how would I know that you wanted to con connect to my machine? So, I mean, you would have... You, the user ha does the user have to go be in the company portal yes. in order to and, see that? And, and this is around the whole trustworthy connection and trustworthy con, um, computing and support of saying, look, we don't want people connecting unattended to other people's computers. And you'll see here now, I've accepted on my end and I can now go and connect into that and I can now see Adam's computer. So what I'll quickly do is I'm gonna to, going to take that session back, Adam, um, and I'll share. Yeah. And we want to share that one. Um, and cool, we can see that. I'll just quickly fix up the cameras. Um, so you can see that I now have Adam's computer on my VM and I can interact with his computer and much like you would with a standard team viewer account. So I can sit there and help him with his important work. Oh, very nice. Let's go ahead and put this up here. I think that needs to be yep. there. It's good. Um, so what we've done in the background from an admin point of view is as soon as we've gone and selected this new remote assistance session, You'll, start, you'll see a button here called Remote Assistance Start Remote Assistance up here. So we'll click on that and it'll go and bring up the same web address and it'll prompt you, do you want to allow TeamViewer 14 to load up? I'm just going to hit no because otherwise it could cause other issues to occur. Um, but when that goes through, it'll sit there with a session and you'll note that the session ID here is an S session, um, which means that it's a support session. So if I go on Adam's computer and I go and select TeamViewer, um, I can open TeamViewer host and I can see that that ID is actually different. Um, and obviously we'll change that password once we finish this video. So you won't be able to connect. Um, <laughs> but I need help with solitaire. Well, we will, or, or as, a, as an Easter egg, we may leave the VM sitting there and see how many people connect in and finish the game of solitaire for us. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, so, one, there's a few things that we've found um, over the 
um, last couple of years while we've been doing this support via team viewer and everything associated around that where if you don't have um, the team viewer host already on the computer um, you don't have the ability to say right click and run as administrator um, this UAC prompt wouldn't appear because you're sitting there um, and it's being suppressed uh, because the team viewer engine is running in the user context, not as the system context. So um, this is very much like um, what we've seen with other um, meeting slash sharing um, tools that are out there. So Skype uh, and Teams even have the same sort of functionality where uh, if you take control of my machine and I've, I've got a process that's running as an administrator, you can't interact with that uh, process. And so like looking at it from a config manager perspective, um, you know, you're on you're on a chat with someone, you Skype for business is open, it's easy. So you say, hey, share your desktop to me. And then you say, oh, wait, I can't do anything until I run. Um, because I can't run as admin. The moment you do a run as administrator, it blocks out the screen or that sort of thing. So yep. same kind of um, thing here. And so the difference are to correlate that to the config manager environment. If you use the remote control tool that's built into the config manager console, you would have you would be able to then remote remote in as an as an administrator and do administrative functions um, or run as an administrator, put your credentials in. Um, yes without the screen being blocked out or grayed out um, and you'd still be able to interact with those windows. So same sort of uh, functionality here. So it's really nice that Microsoft is, or, or just in general, Windows is protecting us from um, people exploiting these types of remote tools without our permission. So that's nice. Definitely. And, and it works pretty well, um, as you can see, it, it, and that connection was pretty seamless and, and had no issues. Um, <coughs> Well, what, what I'd also note here is that we didn't have to exchange um, team viewer IDs or team viewer passwords or anything like that. So from a security standpoint, there is no ability for me to connect back into Adam's computer once I close this session, unless Adam goes in and allows me to come back through through the company portal. Um, and, and this is around and it also it comes back to that trustworthy support level of we want to make sure that anybody's connecting to any computer is doing it in a safe and secure manner. Uh, and we don't have to sit there and exchange details so that while I'm on the phone to Adam and he reads out his team viewer IDs, one of his mates sitting down a couple of desks down goes open, opens up team viewer and puts those details in there and starts doing something to his computer or uh, intercepts that call. So it's, it's a security thing that's really important. Um, and the, the big thing um, with uh, using TeamViewer as well is it's not locked to that LAN. So yes, uh, SCCM uh, remote tools can now go out through the CMG and everything associated around that, but that's relatively new. Yes, definitely. Um, and so so I'm thinking through this from a support perspective, and so um, two different scenarios that I would wonder about. So one is, so you don't have TeamViewer deployed to the workstation at all. How do you handle that? And two, um, let's say the company portal doesn't load or for some reason, if that's the problem that the user has, it's, hey, I can't get into this. So then they don't see the flag. They can't go yep. in there and respond to your TeamViewer request. Um, How would you handle those two scenarios? Uh, so for scenario one, um, if you don't have TeamViewer on your computer, what it'll actually allow you to do is uh, use that session ID and connect in and download a, a session host um, for all intrinsic purposes, which gives you the ability to sit there and say, I'm going to quickly download that. It's there for this session and that's it. It's not the easiest solution to talk somebody through, but it works and, and it will go, go and run it in the user context and it doesn't give you that admin access. So you um, would essentially direct me to this URL on, well, uh, over the phone or something yeah. as the user. Yep. Hey, go here, get, use this link to go here and go get the tool. 
so I can copy the clipboard uh, and paste it in there. So uh, in the scenario um, where you're, um, you've still got access to the company portal, you'd still be able to click on the link in the company portal. If it doesn't find TeamViewer on your computer, it will go and download an executable for you and run that in the user context, which is the support host. Um, whereas if you don't have access to the company portal, that's where I would then say, look, what we're going to do as a break glass last ditch effort is I'm going to get you to go to the team viewer website and do it manually and run that in the user context um, because that's the best we can offer at that point. Or say, look, I can't get onto that computer. Um, you've saved everything. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to send out a computer reset and when it comes back up, hopefully it's fixed. Excellent. Yep, that works. Um, so that that's at a very high level how that team viewer methodology works. Um, the workflow that um, is starting to become standardized for how you do this support level now is when a um, when say Adam was would ring up, you start in that user UI, right? Um, so we're in the user blade in Intune. And I can go and search for Adam. Um, so I search for Adam. Yes, we've only got four users, but if you had a few hundreds of users and thousands of computers, this is how you'd find it. And you'd go and select Adam. And from there, um, we have the ability to select devices and we can see what laptops and desktops and workstations and computers are associated with Adam's account. And these are AAD devices at this point. Um, so you may see additional devices that are, don't appear in Intune. We then select on that device. And once it loads up, the best bet you do here is to copy this um, name because when you hit manage, it's going across to the Intune blades and it actually doesn't bring the computer name through, which is a, a shame, but that's just unfortunately what we've got today. Um, from there, I've, I'm on Adam's computer. I can see that this is his computer name. I haven't had to ask him, what's your computer name, Adam? I haven't had to ask what's your asset number, anything like that. This is where I'm just capturing and, and having a conversation with Adam on the phone. Um, and I've just gone straight to his computer out of, oh yeah, I can see your computer and we can then go and have a quick look and go, oh, look, you've got a compliance issue or you've got a, um, a configuration issue. That's going to be a, a problem with your computer. So what I'm going to do is look at changing that setting for you. Uh, so yeah, and, and again, then you have the ability to come in here and we go uh, new remote assistance session and you'll see there will say, cool. Once you've hit the button, it's going to appear down the bottom here. And you'll see it's initiating your new remote assistance session. And it's appeared down here in the remote assistance. We click on that. And Adam will also have one sitting in his company portal. All right. So just um, to, to test the um, what you described to me, you um, uninstall Team Viewer. I uninstalled Team Viewer. So, right, so, do you want to share your screen, Adam? Then, yeah. Okay, so uh, I've already I already responded to the flag, and it popped yep. open a window, and so now I get a different uh, executable for Team Viewer to run here. That's correct. Um, so this will take a little bit longer to go through. Um, that's interesting. Um, so you'll now see that I have a session code there or Adam has a session code there and we let that go through. Um, and it actually appears to auto connect and away we go. But from an admin side, it's a little clunkier, but this is, as you can see, it will work. Um, but it did need Adam, Adam's admin privileges there. Um, so if we go to admin, we'll be able to do stuff. If he'd hit no, or if he didn't have admin privileges, it would run in the user context and we wouldn't be able to do anything. 
So. Good to know. Yep. I like it. It's a very seamless experience. <laughs> Definitely. Um, and, it, and it's come a long way over the last um, 12 months. Uh, and it's made that whole methodology a lot easier to use. Uh, cool. Um, so I think that uh, really wraps up our um, session today. Um, if you are uh, going to be at Ignite like myself, uh, make sure you come and find us. Uh, we're going to have these three stickers available for everybody to grab. But Backing Adam's not going to be there. So you can get some, some focus there. Yeah. Yeah, I unfortunately won't be at Ignite, but uh, if this hopefully this video will drop before Ignite and uh, you'll see this advertisement. But yes, come and get get our faces and get our cool new uh, Intune.training IT I.T stickers. Um, it'll be exciting. We, we like them. It's kind of fun. We're geeks. Um, yeah, hey, why not? We're enjoying it. Having a yes. good time. Um, so, hey, if you want to reach out to us on social media, we've been getting lots of uh, great comments and feedback on the videos and on social media on, on Twitter. Um, it's kind of where we both hang out the most. Um, if you dig around enough, you'll find us all over the place. So um, I'm Adam Gross or at Adam Gross TX on Twitter and Steve is. Uh, I'm Steve at on-prem cloud guy on Twitter um, and Hit us up if there's any ideas or technologies you want us to talk about on the um, podcast. We're always open to ideas and, and happy to um, go through the process of how we would do it ourselves. Absolutely. Well, thanks, Steve, for yet another. Um, hey, you know what, Steve? I think this is this might be a first. We, we need to have a party for this one. This is a first uh, successful demo on camera, first time through. Uh, so. I don't know what happened, but uh, yay, we did it. It's actually Adam. I, I, I need to correct you there. Oh, it's because you were driving. There's two four. We had two successful demos on camera without any issues. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I got all the issues today in my real job. <laughs> um, and, and both of these demos, and, and this is probably the important thing to note, is a lot of our demos we do very little preparation for. We just want to be able to show you that how the technology works and how you can use it in the real world. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we have limited time and we're just trying to help you get some, you know, learn some things and get some content out there. So, um, you know, it's this is this is the way you would do it in production. <laughs> anyway, you know, exactly. Gonna, so cool. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Steve. Have a good one. So.